Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I have some interesting notions uh, about psychology based on the Claire uh, input that I've been receiving lately, which I had found very puzzling. I, when I was in college long, long years ago, I had a minor in psychology, but I have to say, I don't recall ever studying the topic that I'm about to discuss, so I'm just piecing together information based on the Claire stories I've been hearing and the, the Claire, uh, Claire visualizations that I've been getting too, the clairvoyance I have. Um, for a long time now I've been hearing a person who, a, a man, uh, who whenever I start thinking about a man, he he has a subconscious, I think, defense mechanism. I used to find this very upsetting, actually, because it, it, it means that I can't think about a man without him trying to interlope into it, you know. But when you think of it as a, a defense mechanism, it starts to make sense as a subconscious, like, tool to, to prevent anxiety from the feeling that a man may have when he thinks of competition from or the aggressive drive of another man, you see. So then the mind can become more neutral about what's going on. Uh, my mind, that is. <laughs> so, um, so what's been happening to get back to that is whenever I think of a man other than this man, uh, he, his subconscious mind moves into the idea that he is that other man and begins to talk to me. He says uh, there's like um, a subconscious tool that has been taking place because of the long age of darkness it, that goes like this. It goes, and now I will be so-and-so, this person, right? Or now I will sound like this person, I will be this person. And uh, typically what happens is it's very, very sato voce, it's the deep subconscious that this happens in, and it's automatic, it's an automatic response. And, and immediately, to, to me, that person sounds like somebody else, the other person. So, so the um, reward uh, for the person that's employing this subconscious subterfuge is that they begin to sound like the person that I wanted to talk to and they continue to talk to me. Their ego continues to talk to me. Um, and I think that I'm talking to this other person. After a minute or two though, it becomes very obvious because of the nature of this, this defense mechanism, the, the emotional language of the conversation that ensues always is the same and is always based on the soul wounding of the first person. Typically, um, typically what I begin to hear is that this second person doesn't like me. This second person, you know, has snide things to say about me. In real life, this never happens, but whenever this, like, segueing into the other person, the other persona occurs on a subconscious level from the, from the man in question, it happens. And, um, and it always expresses feelings of anxiousness and uh, a, a kind of concealed aggression. And... Um, uh, the aggression is taking place towards me. So there's been a displacement of the feeling of being threatened that the first person, the first man had by using the persona of the, of the second male to vent that aggressive feeling on me, the woman. 
Now, um, um, in addition, there's a tendency on the psychic plane and perhaps in acting out in the real world to, to carry out, um, a, uh, uh, um, to act out uh, a desire to um, mitigate the threat of another man's like aggression into the egoic uh, energy of the first man by acting it out uh, in a um, homosexual like scenario. So, so in this case, this is my hypothesis about this. The one man feels um, threatened by the presence of other men. And so in his daydreaming, or maybe at night in his dreaming, he, um, he dreams that he is having intercourse with other men. Now, this brings me back to some, some time that I spent in the, in the San Diego Zoo many years ago, um, early in the morning, checking out the, the actual behavior of the animals there. And I'm reminded in particular of observation of the Hamadryas baboon, which uh, helped me towards an understanding of pack behavior and feral instincts. Uh, one of the, the only pertinent thing that I have to say is that the dominant male in a pack of Hamadryas baboons would, um, would have a symbolic you know, sh intercourse with both the juvenile males and all the females in that group. So that was his way of expressing dominance. Uh, and, and this behavior, the, uh, kind of a mitigating threat behavior by someone who perceives himself as a human to be um, inferior in strength or power to other men might be expressed in the same way as, an, as a homosexual act of, of threat mitigation. Well, I don't know what y'all will think of this, and those of you who have the psychological and psychiatric experience that I don't have, I have no idea how you're going to react to this notion. So, anyway, uh, in these times of the awakening, when there was, until recently, so much of that, that threat energy in the, in the world of uh, group um, men marauding on the astral plane and raping, descending in, in, en masse and raping one woman at a time, I should think that, I'm just, just guessing, I think that men would feel threatened by that because it happened over and over again, especially on the weekends. And all over Earth it was happening. And so there would be a, um, an incentive, a threat mitigation incentive, subconscious, for men to join that group. So as to avoid the, the possibility of being raped themselves, you know? Even on the astral plane, it's a pretty daunting notion. Uh, and further, these, um, these daydreamed up uh, homosexual scenarios that I've noticed until recently on the astral plane, I, I think they have the same, uh, they, they, they have the same purpose, right? Amongst men who know each other. To, to mitigate the aggressive drive through a symbolic act of sex on the astral plane. <laughs> so maybe that's what latent homosexuality is. It's the daydreaming of that act for that purpose. It's possible. Now, from a wider standpoint, from a more galactic standpoint, I could characterize these, these waves of uh, newospheric energy that have been happening, the astral rape gangs, the, um, the switching of the persona uh, that, that a man may feel segueing into the persona of another man, and the 
the uh, daydream dax of, of homosexuality, a latent homosexuality, um, as waves of clearing of the aggressive uh, drive and the, the more primitive expression of the sexual drive uh, from the world. Um, uh, you have to keep in mind that it's not just human aggression and human sexual drive that we are clearing, but also that through our energetic forms, the uh, aggressive and sexual instincts of all the animals on Earth are also clearing. So there's, a, there's quite a job to do. And uh, as these energies clear, it's going to be possible for men and women to relate more closely and more intimately together. So as has been happening because of the anxieties provoked by the ascension and awakening process, uh, men and women have drawn apart, even long married couples have drawn apart into a more um, meditative state so that their clearing can take place. Um, but now, as these denser energies clear Earth, it's going to be possible for men and women to begin to relate together much more closely than they have done in the past. So I foresee uh, an increase in bonding amongst men and women uh, in, in closeness and, and like that uh, in the coming about two years for the next few years. Um, there are those of us that have been doing an awful lot of clearing and, and have found that, that <clears throat> because our energies were so involved in the transformational process, it's very difficult uh, for us to be closely bonded to other people because other people, they transform at, at, at different times. You know, so they're going through a transformation process two days later or like that than us or two days in advance of us. And whenever transformation takes place, the fur flies, you know. So the fur is always flying somewhere when <laughs> we have friends. So, so I'm, I'm hoping that as the fur flies less, as the transformation becomes a little more mild, that people in general will be able to relate more closely together. Not just bonding of couples, but bonding of friends and, and like that. In a new like stance, in a new stance for humankind that's far, um, far more, far less de deluded, far more based on the truth, the true nature of things. I'm looking forward to that.